death, and then on Sunday, it is Easter Sunday. Does everyone know about Easter Sunday? And we have these little cards back there on the Welcome Center if you would like to take one to invite friends, family. It's a great day to invite people who maybe don't normally go to church. I find that people will sometimes go to church on Easter Sunday when they don't normally. Um, But today is Palm Sunday, and I thought the kids did a great job of walking in with their palms, saying Hosanna and singing praises. It was great seeing them sing. And the story of Palm Sunday, as some of you might know, is told in all four Gospels. And I was struggling this week trying to decide which account to use because each Gospel tells the account in their own unique way. But each story, it has the same basic elements of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. And the crowds are praising him and they're saying Hosanna. They're celebrating their king. And if you've If you've been around the church for more than a year or two, you've probably heard this story a time or two. It's it's hard as a preacher to think of how can I preach this in a way that's new and relevant? How do I how do I capture people's attention? And and maybe that's not the point. And so I was I was wrestling this week with which which scripture to read from. And if you're following the Bible reading plan, you might know that the Matthew passage is in the reading plan, and you probably read the the Matthew passage, and I was listening to a podcast this past week about the Luke passage, and so I'm wrestling with that each, and I decided to stick with John, so we're, we're deviating from the reading plan this week, and part of that is because we've been in John the past few weeks, and so this is just continuing the story. If you were here last week, we read the story about Lazarus, and this week we're just one, one chapter past that, so it'll be John 12. 9 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord today. John 12, 9 through 19. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. The next day, a great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people because they had heard that he had performed that sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look at how the whole world has gone after him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Wouldn't it be great if the whole world was actually going after Jesus? I, I always find that last sentence kind of funny. They were angry because the whole world was going after Jesus. The Pharisees didn't think that that was a great idea because for the Pharisees, this was a threat for the whole world to go after <coughs> Jesus. As I was studying this passage, I couldn't help but notice the politics in it. Did you notice the politics in this passage, the the gospel of Jesus is political. I read something this week that said Palm Sunday is the most political Sunday of the year. Have you ever heard that? It kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. You're not supposed to talk about politics. And I noticed this past week on Facebook that there were a lot of political arguments. People were getting heated. They weren't from this congregation, thankfully. I didn't see any of you arguing with other people, but I saw a lot of arguments about politics. And I won't go into the details about those arguments, because mostly because I kept scrolling by them. But some of these debates, they were getting heated and angry. And 
And if you've ever been on Facebook for more than five minutes, you probably know what I'm talking about. You've probably seen some of these debates. People can get really fired up. And it was no different back in Jesus's day. The politics of the day were getting heated. There were a couple of different groups in Jerusalem that day, and it wasn't, it wasn't Democrats and Republicans. It was the Roman, the Roman rulers, the religious authorities, and then there were some common people. And the Jewish people, they were headed for Jerusalem for Passover. Passover is where they remember God's deliverance. They remember that God delivered them from slavery in Egypt many, many years before. Many Jewish people still celebrate Passover today. And in those days, the Jewish people were under Roman authority. And so Rome was the world leader of the day. And so every Passover, when the Jewish people would head to Jerusalem, the Roman rulers would also head to Jerusalem. Pilate and his soldiers, they would go there for crowd control. They were worried that things might get out of line. These people are coming to celebrate their liberation from Egypt. What's going to keep them when they all get together from trying to liberate themselves from the Roman oppression? They were worried about an insurrection. And so they were headed there. So Pilate and his army were in Jerusalem that week to keep people in line. And according to historians, they say that there were two processions that week. This was something new that I learned this week. There were two processions into Jerusalem that week. From the West came Pilate, and he was likely riding a horse or a chariot, and he was surrounded by soldiers. And it was triumphant. There was glory and riches and the people likely crowded around to see the Roman power in all its glory. It was like a big parade. I know people here love their parades. And so the people went out to see it. And from the other side of the town, from the east, there came Jesus wearing ordinary clothes, riding on a donkey. It was a humble parade for a humble king. The people who crowded around to see him, they were ordinary people. Just like you and me, they heard about his miracles, and so they wanted to see him. They heard how he healed a blind man, and how he raised Lazarus from the dead. And so the people, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna. It's a word of praise, but it's also a cry for help. The word Hosanna literally means save us. Save us. They were crying out, save us now. Please save us. They wanted to be saved. They wanted to be saved from Roman oppression. They wanted to be healed from their illnesses. They wanted a savior that could, that could heal them, and they believed that Jesus was their savior. As I was learning this, I was wondering if the Roman government even knew about Jesus' entry into town that day with all the big processional going on in the West. Did they notice the humble man on his donkey? It didn't seem, as I read the Easter story, that they really saw Jesus as a threat. The people who were most threatened by Jesus's entry into the city that day were the Pharisees. They were the religious leaders. They were the ones upset by Jesus's entry into the city because more and more people were beginning to follow Jesus instead of following their laws. And so they were upset. The story about Lazarus being raised from the dead, it was upsetting people so much that they were going out to kill Lazarus to show that Lazarus was dead. They didn't want people to see Jesus as their king. And so Palm Sunday is political because it challenges the world's understanding of who is in charge, who is in power, who is the ruler here, who is the king. The Roman government had their own understanding about power and peace. They had what was called the Pax Romana. I know I've talked about this before, but the Pax Romana is Roman peace. It was peace by force and might. It was peace where if you got out of line, they would put you back in line. That was the kind of peace that they believed in, peace that was enforced. And the religious leaders, they had worked out a deal with the Roman Empire that they could practice their religion. They would follow the law, and as long as they stayed in line with the Pax Romana, they were okay. They weren't, as long as they didn't get out of line. But Jesus came and he was, he was bringing things a little out of line. He challenged both of these worldviews. He said that peace was through him and through only him. It was a political statement in that day to say that Jesus was king. Because if you say that Jesus is king, then you're saying the 
the Roman government isn't the ruler. Jesus is the ruler. To say that Jesus is king is to say that all earthly powers are not king. To say Jesus will save you means we're saying it's not the world's way that saves us. But I wonder if the Romans even noticed that first. I'm sure they thought it was foolishness. Paul says the way of the cross is foolishness to the world. What, what kind of king rides in on a donkey? But the Pharisees took offense. People were following Jesus, saying that he was the king. <coughs> they, didn't want, they didn't want Jesus to get in the way of the deal that they had made. Jesus upset the status quo of the day. Jesus was ushering in a new kind of kingdom, a new kind of way of living in the world, one that watched out for the underdog, one that saw people on the margins. Because when you, when you enforce peace, you're not keeping an eye on those on the outskirts. And so Jesus, he saw the people on the outside. He saw the lame and the blind and the poor, and he brought them into his circle. This wasn't the guy that they wanted to be their king. They didn't want a king who saw people on the outside. They wanted someone stronger, someone mightier, someone who would ride in like a mighty warrior with chariots. They expected a political ruler who would rise up and overthrow the government, likely in violent ways. They wanted immediate freedom and immediate results. Instead, here's a man riding in on a donkey. Palm Sunday is political because it leads us to rethink who is in charge. Is it our political leaders who are in charge? No, it's Jesus who is in charge. <coughs> Palm Sunday is political because it reminds us that all power and authority doesn't always look like what we expect it to. It doesn't always look like we want it to. Palm Sunday reminds us that the government doesn't save us. It reminds us that our laws, our religious laws don't save us. It's Jesus who saves us. And Jesus doesn't always look or act like we want him to or expect him to. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem is different from what they expected. And if you're reading the devotional that was passed out earlier in the season, there's this quote. The author, he points out that this triumphant king does not take lives. Instead, he lays down his life in order to give life. In him is the true triumph over death. He reversed the curse of death, accomplishing what no one else could do. On Palm Sunday, Jesus is illustrating that the kingdom of God doesn't look like the kingdoms of this earth. As the psalm that was read in the beginning that Lori read, God's faithful love endures forever. God's faithful love lasts forever, even when we're looking the wrong direction. Even when we're looking for the wrong type of king, God's faithful love lasts forever. God doesn't give up on us. And I think that's what Holy Week teaches us, that God continues to work in spite of what we do. Even when we're looking at the wrong leaders, God still loves us. He just wants us to keep our eyes on him. He is the leader and ruler of our world. I'm gonna invite the, the worship team to come forward as I close in prayer today. Lord, you are the beginning and end. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the one who gives us, who gives us salvation. You are the only one who saves us. We so often look to political leaders, to political rulers. We look to the wrong things, Lord, but only you can save us. Only you know the way, the truth, and the life, Lord. I pray today that you will lead us in your ways, Lord, that you will teach us your ways so that we can be more like you, so that we can know what to expect, so we're, that we're not like the religious rulers of those days who are looking for the wrong things, Lord. I pray that you will speak to us today, Lord, and we thank you and we lift your name up, Lord, and we give this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.